Hi, in this video I'm going to discuss adding into winning positions. How to? <laughs> so, um, th th this is a question that comes r around quite a bit. A lot of people struggle with it. Uh, it's, it's quite, you're, we're quite used to taking profits um, on winning positions, not necessarily adding to winning positions. So here we're going to be looking at adding to winning positions. Are they a good thing to do? Is it a good thing to do? Yes, at the right time. Of course it's a great thing to do because you can end up multiplying that trade into not just a, a normal winner but it may extend the winning opportunity way beyond and, and making it a bumper trade. So yes, doing it is great. The hows, the how to's and the when to's I guess is the next uh, sort of things to take into account. When do you do this? You do it when you've got the opportunity and there there isn't and the conditions and the market conditions are right for you. Now I would say be aware of the news, the fundamentals of what you're doing, and ensure that you've got a better chance if you if you understand both of those. Uh, any news events that might come out and spoilers, uh, but before that the f the actual fundamentals of where things are at time. There comes points in the markets where the markets become very very choppy. There's this really unknown, and we're in one of those arguably at the moment. The markets have become quite choppy. We're getting positive news, negative news, exp positive surprises, negative news coming with that sort of later in that surprise, and we're seeing the markets whipsaw basically. Is it a good time to be adding to intraday positions? No. Is it a good time to be adding to long, long term positions? Well, there's some maybe some possibilities if you're looking up the higher time frames, but. At this stage, um, if I was looking to start taking from a, like a swing or long-term position uh, on these markets, I would tread very carefully and, and it would take quite some uh, proving for me to actually do it at this stage. It needs to be, the conditions need to be right. And that same principle goes down the time frames. So you've just got to make sure that you've got the opportunity, you haven't got a news event that's going to come out bang straight uh, you know, an hour or two hours into your trade and potentially spoil it. So got that out of the way. Next thing is there, so the market conditions. You, you've obviously got your your uh, the the market that you're actually looking at, the, the let's say forex market at the moment. Here I'm looking at, and you've got your currency pair that you've identified that will work well. What's your target going to be? Um, where's the targets? Because if you're adding into something, it, it's it's easier to add into something if you've got a a, a a possible target that's may, that is logical. Now, on this particular example here, I've I've done something. I've wound the the candles back here for now, and we'll we'll run them sort of uh, delayed, but running. Uh, we'll run them to show you what happens in the market to give you a bit of an idea. But here, these lows here are the near-term lows. The, the lows, the next set of lows beyond these goes back to 2015 on this particular market. So it, the, these are near term, well they're, they're quite long term lows at that rate. So a break of this area, if the expectation is beyond that, you've, you've got to look back. You might say, well actually I'm going to go for that 2015 low. Um, it might be wishful thinking, but if you if you've got the the plan behind the trade, well then you should have a bit more confidence in terms of what you're doing. So, you, you've you've got your your pairing, your identified your target, and then it's really a case of method, uh, the principles and the methods behind adding into the trade. Before we look at the principles in too much detail, let's just look at the method of managing your risk. Uh, behind the trade, so for example, we just, I'm just going to you you could have an initial position that you're going to enter. Price has gone up. Uh, draw let's draw some price on here. So price has gone up, and for whatever reason, at that point, you want to be. Um, it might be in a long term um, trend down anyway. Whatever whatever's happening to the market, you've built up your case to why you want to be in it. You're going to have a stop above those prior highs, for example, and there's your risk. And if you're risking 1%, there's your 1% risk. You're into the trade on the break there. Or you might even be taking the trade at the very highs there with a, a stop above. It doesn't matter. Whichever floats your boat. So you're into a 1% risk. The, the principles then is as you add into trade, so as you trade 
and you you add into this you add in with the same percentage but you move your stop so you move your initial stop if that was your entry you move your initial stop um, down to the as you're entering the set the second trade uh, you're moving your stop down now it may not be all the way down it's got to be logical uh, but wherever it may be you're adding you're adding in a new percentage it might be that you're adding one percent on each occasion um, and you, you're moving the stop down to that level so in other words you're only ever risking one percent if you add into the next one then you're moving the stops of the previous two positions down so you're adding in and you're starting to build behind you a, a reasonable profit level uh, whatever happens is it gets into the more you're moving down here the more you're locking in behind you so in this sort of case if you can uh, even if you don't know where ultimately the price level is going to go and you can be wrong at some stage yes you might lose on one of those trades but you're only ever going to be losing one percent on one of the add-ins and the rest as it's as it's building up you're going to make some pretty decent money so that there's the the main principle behind it it's then that really is the how do how do i what method do we use to get into the add-ins well simply there's 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 numerous i mean it's how long's a piece of stream oh, yeah, they, 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 I could list down pages full <laughs> of different ideas, but a couple of the um simplest the very simplest move I would say is uh, might not suit everyone and technically it might not be necessarily right for me as a technical trader, however it works for people is they go in on they'll go in at intervals price intervals. So if they've identified a level down here somewhere, um, they'll, they'll add in at each of those. I'm using the pivots here as an example, but these are the monthly pivots. Um, they, they, they might just have these as their, their, their adding points, for example. And they, they, they'll be at intervals, equalish intervals all the way down. Some people may use like 30, 40, 50 pips. Some people may use the daily average true range on a multiple of one and a half or something like that, whatever it might be. And they're adding in to the position. So long as you're not adding those positions too frequently and too close to one another, where price could just um, turn very quickly, you, it, there's there's a complete simplicity of this method of just adding in, adding in, adding in, moving stop, moving stop, and it's it's one of the methods that you'll see out there with people where they know where the market's already moved, and I know where this market's already moved, and it will work perfectly well for this market, but. Um, this this is by the way I've just frozen this and I've taken it back I've jumped back in time uh, to this so you can just see what happens here but that's one method second method might be a bit more appealing to some traders that feel less comfortable with that one and some more technical traders they'll use methods of um, either retracements to back to moving averages uh, so they'll treat every add-in as a new trade a trade all on its own in terms of its ability still moving the stops of the first trades down and the earlier trades down but using each new entry a new stop position etc as a new, as as if it's a new position because you at the end of the day you have belief in terms of what you're doing you've got to have confidence in it's going to go work out uh, and when that starts coming into play you just literally use those methods. Let's just run through this chart and we'll, we'll just run through how it might have happened here. And I say how it might, Harry Hindsight, it's so easy to do this when you know what's coming. Uh, it's a lot more different and that's where the psychology comes into it, which I'm not going to go into at the moment. But uh, for example, let's just run through here. So you, you've, I'm going to stop this for a moment. <laughs> Pause, it's gone a bit quick. Uh, firstly, it's gone, it's gone, it's broken this level here. It depends on how you wanted to get in here. We were sitting there near a, a potential short position. Your first position might have come up here. I like lower highs and things like this to come in from a, a okay, it hit a, a major high before. Whatever reason, I like the lower high. I might have been my first position here, for example. Let me just draw on here. Just put up a line on. Uh, let's just say my first position was here. So uh, my uh, my first stop up here. 
then you're trading with what's going on. Now, there was a nice breakout trade that occurred there, a breakdown trade potential there, which still had potential in terms of on its own, back to its previous lows, and could have been played. Now, in this particular case, the stop on this one might not have been right the way down to where you entered your first trade, and it, 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 might, it might be that your stop on this needs to be here, for example. And when you when considering that, you might then want the, when you're adding here because it's doing what it's doing here. You could bring the stop down on the first one, so you're trailing it. Now here, my risk is more than one percent, so it's, it's it's breaking the rule of the simple process, but it's it's right for the new trade that's going in. Okay, it's then run down, and there's there's another potential if you if you're a, a breakout type trader, there, there's potential at some stage of this these lows being broken. So this this could be the next somewhere around this point. Now it might be that you wait for the retrace and trade the retrace, or you wait for the break, whichever you prefer. So let's just run this chart now again. It's just gone. So if you'd waited, you wouldn't have been in this particular trade. However, um, let's just put, take this back. Often you get a retrace back to the highs there, and you can get into there. And then you've got to consider uh, back into the sorry into the highs into the previous lows there. Um, you can get into there, be shorting, or looking as a 21 moving average um, that that came into play. So you. you, you Whichever way, even if you went here, as long as your stop placement isn't too tight to the position, um, you, you're going to be still in the trade. At the, at the time, whether you enter here or here, the t at that time, wherever you're placing your stops, your other, your other stops are starting to move down accordingly. So the risk is reducing on all of those trades and the overall risk in the position is, is keeping as close to the original risk as possible. So soon we've got into this trade. Now, off it's gone, chopping around. This is this is a sort of thing, psychologically, you've got to be prepared for. Um, there might have been other trades you've taken in between that. Let me just pause this again. There may be other add-ins you can see, but I, I'm not a great lover personally of adding in when I've just added in and looking to add into the same sort of price level. So here I'd just personally just be sitting. Uh, it may be that as this is all happening and without adding another trade in, I, uh, the stop placement might be all moved down to a, a reasonable level here. So your, your recent add-in, whether, whether it be this from these the retest of these lows or the 21, the stops are, uh, are gradually moving down. Um, but giving yourself enough range not just to be stopped out too early. You've got a retrace occurring now. This, let's just let this happen. And then off it's going again. Now there's there's all sorts of signals that you can read into these markets as they break down. Uh, a, a, a secondary retrace to the 21 might not be some people's cup of tea. Or well, a third actually. It, it did it here. It came back. It, it's done it a third time. But there may be other signals. Um, I, I'm looking at the outside bar there, the uh, key reversal bar. Lovely uh, move there, potential. And again, you can be placing the stop there, adding into a position on the lows there, and off you go again. So you can see the principles. It's not quite so set and tight against uh, what would have been the method um, for the person that's just adding in at 35 or 50 pip intervals or whatever. It's it's it slightly overlaps. It's it's a little messier, but technically it might fit your method of trading easier. And you, all you're doing at the, the, when this is happening is moving the stops accordingly, um, managing your stops and managing that risk all of the time. Every time you add in, you're looking for where you can, how you can manage and keep the um, trade running in your favor and you can just see that i mean this this market just carried on going i'm not going to go any further but uh, there's plenty of reasons why you could have been adding in uh, all the way through this up to a certain level uh, there, there will always be quite big retracements at times that might be the reason that you turn you're coming out of the trade uh, but there's plenty of signals that you you might see as a trader uh, running through this market 
So there we are, that is adding into positions. I'm going to stop it here. Got questions, post, post them. Just post them to me and I will answer them. Um, the exit points, you've got to decide on exit points in terms of, what, uh, I'm just looking at this particular move here, sorry. Um, yeah, it's, it's done really well. You may have had uh, other entries coming through, uh, through here and you, you're, whether, whether it's near your ultimate target or not um, and how close you bring the stops down as you manage it down there's, there's some people just bring it down to the prior lows which is an absolutely no problem job but there'll be a time when maybe you're into uh, one of your positions may get uh, stopped out at a loss or break even or whatever it may be um, I mean, first test of 50. I mean, a lot of people would be looking as that as an entry around about that area. Uh, stops above here. Would this run out? Let's just run it through. Um, it looks all right at the moment. I know the market here went completely choppy. Let me just move this a little. There we go. And you can see it went, it got into quite a choppy uh, price action, quite range bound here, eventually um, going and breaking down further. But took some time um, so you, you, you've got to be patient with these um, as well but as patient as you want to be and you're just managing the risk you could have all your risk your uh, risk down your stops down to this level where my cursor is now and off it's gone again it may be you've added into this and it does go through down to this uh, stop it here anyway well actually it's at the end anyway um, here you go, there's the end. Um, there you go, it eventually hit those uh, 2015 level on this particular occasion. Easy when, you, when you've when you seen it before, Harry Hindsight would say, but that's the principle behind it. Uh, are you all out here? Maybe not, because this market still looks like it's got in a, in a downward trend. But um, I'll leave that bit to you, the absolute exit. You've got to decide on that. But I can assure you, you'd have made a reasonable amount of money on riding this uh, particular journey. Okay, that's it for me on this. Uh, as I say, questions, put them below. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. And also subscribe to my channel, please. And I will give you more videos. Take care. Bye for now.